Hey, this is Leo for Actualized.org. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about how to meditate deeper. I really consider this episode here like a part two to my original episode called How to Meditate, which is really popular. A lot of people have uh, gotten a lot of value from from that one there because it's a no bullshit guide to meditation. What we're going to do here, though, is I want to go a little bit deeper into some of the various techniques that you can do with your meditations. And I'm going to give you three phases or stages of meditation that I've personally been working on myself to take you basically from the very beginning newbie phases of meditation, the first stage where you're just like clueless about what to do or how meditation works. So we're going to have you smoothly transition from that into deeper and deeper and deeper and more advanced stages of meditation until ultimately you can get to some really cool advanced places. So I want to kind of guide you through that. Also, I want to cover some of the common problems that people have when they're meditating. So what are the greatest pitfalls for meditators? And I'm going to give you a little quick schedule that you can use for how to meditate. All right. So here we go. Stage number one. And I'm kind of assuming that you watched my first video here, right? So I'm not going to be talking about all the basics of meditation. I I assume that you understand how the basics work. So if you do understand that, then here's... Stage one, this is where you would begin meditation if you've never meditated before, or even if you have meditated before, but you haven't been doing it very strictly and you feel like you're not getting good results with it, you can just start here at stage one, right? It never hurts to relearn the basics. And this one is the easy version and it's called simple observation. So here's how it works. You sit down, you can have your eyes either open or closed, but you sit down in a meditative like posture. And then what you do is you just allow everything to happen. And all you do is you just watch it. You simply observe it. So whatever's going on becomes okay. And you're not trying to control any of it. So what will happen? Well, when you sit down and let's say you close your eyes and you're sitting there, what will happen is Thoughts will come up, and various feelings and sensations will come up. Emotions will come up. Generally, a lot of times what we do is we try to control that. And we try to either focus our mind on not thinking anything, or we try to focus on mo- our mind on some specific objective or goal within meditation. And that's one form of meditation, which is cool. Remember, there's many, many, many valid forms of meditation. So I'm not telling you that this is the only way or that these three ways are going to be the only ways that you should meditate. No, what I recommend is that you try a slew of different meditation techniques, which is uh, what I'm hoping you'll do here. So what you're doing is you're letting your mind do whatever it wants to do without controlling it. And all your job is, is just to watch. Your mind will wander. Let it wander. Let it think about tomorrow night and let us think about the email you just got and let us think about what your wife thinks about you or the fight that you just got in with your husband. Let us think about all that stuff. Let it wander to scary places, dirty places, silly places, whatever kind of places it wants to go to, let it go there. But as it goes there, your job is to watch it go there and just be mindful of the fact that, oh, it's going somewhere. It was here. And now it's there, and now it's here, and now it's there, and now it's here, and it's walking around in circles. You just watch it. As simple as those instructions sound, it's still going to be very difficult. And you're still going to be likely to get frustrated and want to fight or control your mind. And your mind will say stuff to you like, oh, well, I shouldn't be thinking about this during meditation. And oh, I shouldn't be feeling that during meditation. And I shouldn't be feeling anxious during meditation. And what happens there is that your mind starts to fight with itself. Your only job is to observe, not to fight with yourself. So don't fight. And the way you do this is you just realize that 
when you're sitting down to meditate for this brief 10, 20, 30 minutes of your day, that you don't want to take your thoughts within that meditation session seriously at all. Not just thoughts, but also feelings. Emotions might come up. You might feel angry or agitated or jealous or whatever, frustrated. And you can do one of two things. You can either buy into those and take them seriously, or you can just watch them. So your objective here is just simply watch them. And what's going to happen is that inevitably you will fail at this. You will fail dozens, if not hundreds of times, just within a 20-minute window of your meditation. And what you got to do is you got to not get caught into the trap of beating yourself up for having failed. You just watch yourself getting failed. You see that? Instead of berating yourself and telling yourself, oh, I screwed up this meditation session, you just, again, you let your mind go there, but you watch your mind go there. Don't try to control anything in this first stage. Pretty basic. About as basic as it gets. As simple as this is, you're still going to screw this up. You're not going to be able to follow these instructions to the letter. Why is that? Well, because your mind is untrained and meditation is a discipline. It's a practice. It's something that needs to be done every day. By the way, just so we get the logistics straight here, when I talk about meditation, to me what that means is you're sitting down in a quiet place, eyes open or closed, you have a timer on, and you do, I would say, a minimum of 20 minutes. Try to shoot for 20 minutes. If you want to do more, you can do more. And you have to do this on a daily basis. Every single day you have to do this. All right? So that's stage one. After you've practiced stage one for a while, and you've gotten pretty good at it, or maybe you're still crappy at it, after a while, then what you do is you move on to stage two. Stage two is like the intermediate stage. And this one I call active detachment. So here what you do is, again, you sit down in your typical meditation pose, and you now actively try to release every thought that comes into your mind. So it's just like the first stage, except now you're actually doing a little bit of manipulation. Something comes up like, oh, shoot, I got that project that's due tomorrow at school. Like, let's say you get that, that thought. And what you do is you say, oh, that's a thought. Let me just let it go. And you let it go. And what you get after you let it go successfully for a few seconds is you get a little window of peace. And then what happens is that usually another thought comes up. Sometimes immediately. A thought will come up like, oh, did I lose my car keys? Where did I put my car keys? I can't remember where I put my car keys. What if I lost them again? So that thought might come up. And again, you realize, oh, that's just a thought. Let me let it go. And you detach and release it. And then immediately, that thought can come up again. So again, you might say, but my car keys, I really need my car keys. I can't just let this one go. Again, you, you have to realize that, oh, it's just another thought. Let me let it go. And this is the active release approach. So a couple of points about this. As simple as these instructions are, you're going to screw this one up a lot. Because what's going to happen is you're going to try to let thoughts go, but thoughts can be sticky and they can creep back up on you. So the instruction here is very important. You try to drop the thought, release it. And if you can't, for whatever reason, don't worry about it. Try it again a few seconds later. And if you still can't release it, don't worry about it. Try again a few seconds later. The key is that you don't lose your composure and start to panic and that you're able to stay calm throughout this process. Because notice, as soon as you're frustrated or you're panicked, that tells you what? That tells you that you're taking these thoughts too seriously. Even the thought, I have to be meditating properly, you're taking that too seriously too. So this whole idea of not taking your thoughts too seriously, this is the entire theme and point of meditation, is to make you aware of this. 
Now, if you become uh, this anal person who tries to meditate perfectly all the time, well, counterintuitively, what that does is that that backfires on you because you're not taking yourself um, less seriously like you should with meditation. You're too serious about meditating. So it's a little paradoxical there. So you're going to try to release the thought. Often what I find happens is that you release the thought and the thought comes back up five seconds later. And what you do then is you get a little bit off your center and you're like, oh, damn, but I released this thought. If I released it, why is it coming back? I must have screwed up. And then you got to recognize, oh, what am I doing? I'm, I'm just creating more thoughts. Let me release these thoughts too. And you release those. But then they come back. Two minutes later, they come back and you're like, oh, I should have released these, but I didn't. And so you're playing these mind games with yourself. You always have to go meta, see what's happening, and then release. All right? And if it fails, don't worry about it. Try it again. You'll fail many, many times. Also, a trick is don't resist thoughts arising because thoughts will arise. Sometimes what I tend to do is I sit down to meditate and then I tell myself something like, okay, got to not think. Got to not think. No thoughts. No thoughts. Stop thinking. No thoughts. And it's like you're trying to, you know, suppress them from coming up. It's kind of like you have a burp that's about to come up and then you hold it back or you got to sneeze and you hold that one in. And that's kind of what you're trying to do with your thoughts. But that doesn't work so well. Usually what that does is that makes you kind of more panicked. And again, there's this whole problem trying to manipulate your way all the time. So even though in this stage two technique, you are actively detaching and that can be viewed as a form of subtle manipulation. It's not nearly as manipulative as you sitting there trying to prevent thoughts from arising in the first place. That's going to leave you very frustrated and it's going to be counterproductive. All right, so you got that? Okay, so that's basically stage number two. Again, I recommend you do it for 20 minutes every single day with a timer. Uh, as discussed with the other technique. Now let's move on to stage number three. This one I would call the advanced technique. And this one I call awareness focus. So what you do here is you sit in your typical meditative posture and you put your awareness on awareness itself. Put your awareness on awareness itself. This is a little tricky because unless you've meditated for years, then actually you don't know what awareness is. When I use that word awareness, you kind of know what I'm talking about, but not really. You don't have a phenomenological, experiential understanding of awareness. And awareness is a very weird phenomenon. Unless you've observed it for years, it's very hard to put your finger on it. What the fuck is awareness? Hard to be sure. So here what you're doing is you're kind of working on this problem of understanding what awareness is. And the way that you do that is that you notice that everything that comes up at any time in your life, but especially when you're sitting down meditating, is just content that fills this, you might call it, a space of awareness. The field of awareness is filled with content. An emotion is a piece of content. A thought is a piece of content. An itch on your ass is a piece of content. Your mom or your dad yelling at you while you're meditating, that's a piece of content. Your cat coming up and sniffing you or licking you while you're sitting there, that's a piece of content. Everything is a piece of content. Now, usually what we do is we get sucked into this content. And we get sucked into our thought stories and into our emotions. Your job here is just to become aware that all this stuff actually is content and it's happening within this field of awareness. And that awareness itself is not the content. This is a very freaky thing. 
So one way you can do this is you can sit there and you can notice that things enter awareness and then they disappear from awareness. So they arise and then they die. And then they rise again and then they die again. And this is happening constantly. But what you need to do is you need to focus your awareness not on the content, but kind of like you zoom out and it's almost like you're looking at yourself from a third person. Although recognize that when you sit in meditation, you look at yourself from a third person in your mind's eye, that actually that's just more content. Right? You can't escape content. Content is always there. So what you try to do in this advanced stage here is you just focus your awareness on the fact that content is arising. And you try not to get sucked into the content. And you keep your awareness on the fact that you're aware. And you try to maintain that as consistently as possible without having your mind wander off course. And, of course, inevitably it will wander off course. If you first start doing this, you'll probably only be able to do it for 5 or 10 seconds before your mind wanders off course. So what do you do? Your mind wanders off course, you bring it back. It wanders off course again, you bring it back. It wanders off again, you bring it back. Sometimes it'll wander off, and you'll be wandering off in fairy tale land, lost in content, for five whole minutes until you realize, oh shit, I forgot about focusing on my awareness. I've been focusing on the content. And it's like, oh man, those five minutes were wasted. More content. Oh shit, that's more content. More content. Damn it, I'm not meditating properly. More content. Right? So you're going to be playing these mind games with yourself. Just bring yourself back as best you can. Sometimes you'll have sessions where it's going to be really hard and you're going to be wandering all over the place. And that's the whole point of meditating is to, again, build in this discipline. And over the weeks and months as you practice this, you'll get better and better and better. The other thing I recommend that you do is I recommend that you open yourself up to the question of what is awareness anyways? It's a very profound question. Perhaps the most profound question you can actually answer in this lifetime. So when you're sitting there and you're practicing this stage three, start wondering kind of like, what is awareness? I think I know what awareness is, but it's so hard to put your finger on it. I have no clue what awareness is. How could that be? My whole life is constructed out of awareness, and yet I don't know what awareness is. So just kind of open yourself up to wondering. But one warning here is that don't try to logically think your way into a logical answer. When you're meditating, there's no introspection going on here. There's no thinking stuff through. This is not therapy. You're sitting and you're just observing. You're not allowed to think about stuff and try to figure stuff out. That's something different. All right, so that's stage three. Now let me what do is uh, let me talk a little bit about um, some of the common mistakes that I see people making with meditation. And I make all these mistakes myself, so that's why I'm so familiar with them. So let's just run down this list real quick. First one is panic and frustration when you realize that you can't control your thoughts. So when you first start meditating, you think like, well, I got to sit there and just kind of control my thoughts. And then you're in for a rude awakening when you discover that actually you have no control over your thoughts. So don't fall into that trap. Could it be that you actually don't have control at all over your thoughts? Would that be acceptable to you if you discovered that about yourself? Well, leave that possibility open and see what you think about that question a couple of years after you've meditated consistently for day after day after day for years on end. Then take a look at that answer. Another pitfall is assuming that meditation should be calm and peaceful. No, 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 no. If you start meditating, and the first few years that you meditate, it's going to be the exact opposite of that. Meditation is going to be frustrating and annoying. You're not just going to be sitting down and blissing out like a yogi. That happens after decades of meditation and perhaps enlightenment. Another mistake is not using a timer. I recommend you get a digital timer 
I recommend that you set it for 20 minutes. You don't look at it while you're meditating, but you turn it away from you. I also recommend that you don't use a smartphone for meditation as a timer. You can in a pinch, but I recommend that you don't because your smartphone has all these distractions on it, notifications and messages and emails and texts, so that doesn't make your job harder. Get an, you know, a separate digital timer. They're real cheap these days. Another common pitfall is trying to stop thoughts completely, which I already kind of addressed. Don't try to do that. Again, in fact, what you're going to discover through lots of meditation is that you have no power to stop your thoughts. And that this is not something that's really even uh, necessary to do for proper meditation. Another common pitfall is resisting thoughts that arise. So you're sitting there, a thought comes up, and you're like, shit, I shouldn't have had that thought. You're resisting it. Stop resisting it. Okay? Another common pitfall is daydreaming. Meditation is not daydreaming. Now, when you do the stage one that I told you about, it might feel a bit like you're daydreaming because you're just letting your mind wander anywhere. The difference, though, is that in the stage one, yes, you're kind of daydreaming and your thoughts can go literally anywhere, don't control them at all, but you're watching them. You're being aware of them, which is not what a typical daydream is. A typical daydream is you're caught in the daydream, in the fantasy of the daydream. Here, you're always aware that you're daydreaming, or at least you're trying to be. Next pitfall is trying to meditate when you're tired. A lot of times, what I find in myself is that, you know, I have a pretty busy schedule. I run a business. In fact, I run multiple businesses. So, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that I could be doing in my life besides meditating. That's frankly cooler than meditation. So what I often do is I try to, you know, slot my meditation time somewhere in the day where I'm kind of tired. I'm not at my peak of mental clarity. Maybe I've just had a big meal or I just woke up and I'm still kind of groggy or I'm about to go to bed and I'm kind of sleepy or it's middle of the day and I'm kind of feeling like I'm taking a nap, but I decide to meditate. And those usually end up being the worst meditation sessions because you're just not able to focus you're not at the peak of your you know, mental clarity. So best time in the day to meditate is whenever you have the highest mental clarity. If that's morning for you, great. That's a common one. For me personally, in the morning, I'm a kind of groggy. So I'm actually likely to fall asleep in the morning. So for me, the ideal time to meditate would be um, sometime in the maybe late morning or early noon time. But I often fail at that because... Um, it's just that like that's my prime time that I usually want to allocate to working on my business or shooting a video or something like that. So it is important when you meditate. Here's another pitfall. Not accepting whatever happens in meditation. A really good trick you can try is just when you sit down right before you start meditating, remind yourself just to accept everything that's happening right now in the present moment. Literally accept it all. Like if you have a toothache, accept that. If your ass is itching, accept that. If you've got some problem at work, accept that. If uh, you don't want to meditate, accept that. If you're failing to meditate properly, accept that. If it's a bad time in the day that you chose to meditate, accept that. Accept everything negative that normally you would resist. And that's very counterintuitive. Because we feel like, oh, well, I don't want to accept all the bad stuff. Let me just accept the good stuff. Except when you do that, you don't realize that um, you can't accept the good without having the bad come back and bite you in the ass. You have to accept it all as a totality. That's something you'll learn as you continue meditating deeper. And perhaps the last pitfall is trying to get somewhere with meditation. It's like you're sitting down, you're meditating right in this moment, but then you have like this goal. It's like, well, today I want to release all my thoughts. Today I want to be perfect or I'm working towards enlightenment or this or that, or I want to achieve some super peaceful state, right? 
you set a certain like agenda for your meditation, stop doing that. Stop trying to get anywhere with your one session. Now, in the big picture, over the long time horizon, I think you should have some goals for your meditation. You should be aiming for enlightenment, and you should be aiming for more peace of mind, and you should be aiming for all this cool stuff that you can get with meditation, but not when you're actually sitting down to meditate. Drop all those goals, because what those goals are going to be are just going to be more thoughts that are going to prevent you from being able to actually achieve those goals. So those goals undermine themselves. All right? And also a point I want to make is that you will have bad days when you're meditating. Some days you're just going to feel shitty. Some days you're going to be real tired. Some days you're going to have a really unruly mind that's going in 10 different directions. And that's okay. Accept that too. Allow that and be ready for that. Sometimes what will happen is you'll have like 10 straight days of really consistent, high quality meditation. You're very calm and focused and everything's going great. And then on the 11th day, your mind is just going nuts all over the place. You can hardly sit still for 20 minutes, let alone keep your thoughts from wandering in a thousand different directions. And then you start to doubt yourself and start saying, oh shit, I'm not progressing fast enough, man. I thought I was better than this. Uh, you just got to allow it because your mind every single morning, you know, your mind is in a different place and different stuff is happening in your life. So you're going to feel differently depending on where you're at. All right. So those are the uh, pitfalls. Make sure that you be mindful of those. Notice them in yourself if you're making them. Now, let me end by just giving you your meditation schedule. Here's what I recommend you do with all the stuff that I told you. I recommend that basically you follow my instructions to the letter. And what that means is that you actually rewatch this video for every stage that you're practicing. So if you want to practice stage one, rewatch that part. If you want to practice stage two, rewatch that part. If you want to practice stage three, rewatch that part. And right before you sit down and meditate, maybe we even want to take some notes on what I said so that you know exactly what you should be doing. Like you have a little instruction sheet. I found that very, very helpful. Very helpful. Because otherwise, if you don't kind of recenter yourself with the instructions, then you're going to forget them and you're going to kind of just wander all over the place. Here's what I recommend as far as the schedule goes. If you're starting at the newbie level, stage one, go do stage one for a whole month, 30 days straight at 20 minutes a day without missing a single day. If you miss a single day, you have to restart that whole cycle from scratch until you get 30 consecutive days. After you've gotten 30 consecutive days of stage one, then go on to stage two. Make sure you reread the instructions for stage two, and then you follow that for 30 days consecutively without missing a single day. If you miss a single day, you have to restart that cycle. So then you complete stage two, then you move on to stage three, and you do that one for 30 days consecutively. Otherwise, you restart the cycle. And that's it. And then after those, you know, 30 days times three, that's 90 days. After those 90 days are over, what you can do is you can return to whatever stage you want or perhaps just continue with the most advanced stage, stage three. Also, at that point, I think you're going to be in a nice position to start doing maybe some enlightenment work, which I talk about in other videos. I'm not going to talk about that here. And you could also start experimenting with various other meditation techniques. What I found helpful, personally for myself, is that I have to try out a bunch of different techniques just to see what fits me. It's almost like wearing a, you know, shoes. You go to the store to buy some new shoes. You got to test out five, ten different pairs before you find some comf comfortable ones. And sometimes you actually got to take them home and wear them for a week before you realize that they're not really that comfortable. So... When you're spending a whole month on each one of these techniques, I think that's the best way to go. And that's what I recommend for you. And also, what's nice about setting up this way in stages is that you, it's almost like you kind of set little, you know, goals for yourself. Not day to day, but month to month. And I find that that's important because otherwise your meditation habit just gets very stale. You're always doing the same thing. It's not exciting. When you set it up in this kind of stage-like fashion, then, you know, you got one month to go, 
then the, you're looking forward to the second month, then you're looking forward to the third month, and so on and so forth. So you want to be kind of switching it up. And also what it does is it gets you awareness of how your mind works and how these techniques work from multiple perspectives, which I find in the end is uh, very helpful to understanding yourself because that's what you're trying to do here. All right. I want to give a quick credit to Peter Ralston, who I got this idea of stages from, stages of meditation. I think it's very a uh, powerful idea. But I'm signing off. I'm done here. Go ahead. Post me your comments down below. Click the like button, please. Share this video with a friend. And finally, come sign up to my newsletter right here at actualize.org. It's a free newsletter. I release new videos and new content every single week. I have cool new projects planned for my subscribers, which I'll be releasing in the next 6 to 12 months. So I'm going to be working actively on that. But the reason you want to sign up is because I want to help you to self-actualize. And I think that meditation here is a really powerful topic, and I'm going to be shooting more videos in the future about how to meditate more effectively and other techniques you can try, because this is just the tip of the iceberg as far as meditation goes and what you could achieve with meditation. To me, this is the most powerful habit. But besides this habit, there's a lot of other stuff we need to talk about to help move you towards the kind of powerful, exciting life that you want to create for yourself. And it all starts with self-mastery. If you can master yourself, specifically this thing up here, the mind, if you can master your psychology, then the world will be your oyster. Sign up and I'll see you soon.